Well, we're a fourth generation family business. The, the business was started by my great grandfather back in 1905. Uh, we now claim to be, um, well, the business is a salmon smoking business. Uh, we, we claim to be the oldest producer of smoked Scottish salmon in the world now. We're certainly the oldest producer of smoked salmon in the UK. Um, uh, we don't imagine for one moment that anyone was smoking Scottish salmon outside of the UK back in the uh, late 19th century, early 20th century. Um, so that's our claim. Um, it, it's often believed and people think that smoked salmon is an ancient Scottish tradition because of course it was always smoked Scottish salmon that had the reputation. But actually it was the fish that came from Scotland and the smoking uh, that was done here in East London. And it was people like my great grandfather, uh, Jewish immigrants that were fleeing Eastern Europe, fleeing Poland, Russia and so on. Um, and they settled in London's East End and the reason they were smoking fish was because refrigeration was very basic and it was a way to preserve fish. There were 250 businesses that needed to relocate, it wasn't just us. So this, this, this area was the greatest hub of manufacturing in the whole of London, basically being wiped out for three weeks of sport. There were 250 businesses there employing some 10 to 12,000 people. It was a thriving industrial area. It's often portrayed as derelict. You know, you often hear, even today, you know, um, you'll hear Sebastian Cohen, you'll hear all the ministers and so on saying, you know, we've helped regenerate a derelict piece of land. It was not derelict. There were businesses that had been there for 100 years. There were brand new business parks on that site. It was a thriving hub of manufacturing. It wasn't pretty. You know, it's, you know, industrial land isn't pretty. It's not like Canary Wharf where you have gleaming skyscrapers. It was, you know, it wasn't particularly clean, but it was, you know, economically strong. And the reason it was strong was because despite all the difficulties with manufacturing, the two things that this area had was, A, it was a hub, which gave it, you know, economic strength because a lot of the businesses work with one another. Um, and two, it had proximity to central London. Absolutely key. That's the reason why our business, we believe our business has survived, where all the other traditional salmon smokeries died out. They all tried to compete with this new mass production industry in Scotland and found they couldn't compete. And here we are, the last remaining of them. And our key strength is that the salmon can come out of our kilns at four o'clock in the morning. It can be at the Savoy Hotel a few hours later or the Dorchester or the House of Lords or Fortnum and Mason within hours of it coming out of the kiln. So proximity to central London is absolutely key for us and indeed for the, the, a lot of the other businesses there. And you know, what we said to a lot of you know, uh, many people, we said, look, where, you know, where Buckingham Palace stores its dustbins isn't the prettiest part of Buckingham Palace, but they still need somewhere to store their bins. Um, but how do we uh, solve the problem? Well, we decided just to be very vocal. Um, and we spoke out on our own account. A lot of the other businesses have said, you know, we like what this guy's saying and asked whether we'd speak on their, you know, behalf too. And we did. And of course, it gave us strength to be able to say we're talking on behalf of, you know, uh, 12,000 employees, uh, 250 businesses. And um, this sort of took over my, you know, took over my life. You know, it was impossible to run a business. Um, you know, it really sort of took over my life. Um, but... We, we put in an objection to the, um, to the, uh, 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 the CPO and our objection was based on the grounds that this wasn't really about regeneration, that the regeneration was just put forward as an excuse to acquire the land for a sporting event. So we didn't say that we had a problem with it being a sporting event, but we basically said that the, the, the premise on which the compulsory purchase had happened was just false. Um, I was due to appear at the public inquiry to cross-examine Sebastian Coe um, and literally the day before that was due to happen I got a phone call from the LDA and they said Mr Foreman if you drop your cross-examination we'll do a deal with you and that was it it was completely unexpected totally out of the blue and um, we just thought well you know we don't really want to argue we want to do a deal and just move on we want to get on with our business um, and so of course I said brilliant let's do a deal and that was it. The whole thing just evaporated overnight. I, I wrote a little note to Sebastian Coe and I put, Dear Seb, you can run, but you can't hide. And um, he never responded. But, um, but there was, of course, a change of mayor as well. Uh, and Boris became mayor of London. And indeed, he came to open this facility. And when he came here, he, you know, he said, this is a shrine to smoke salmon. And he, he declared, he said, you know, this is what we're trying to achieve. This is the legacy in advance which we, we now call the pregacy. Um, but um, 
what we have done, I mean, since having relocated, um, we have said, okay, you said it was about regeneration. We're going to regenerate. We're going to create new businesses. We're going to take an advantage of the fact that this building, you know, we found this site. They didn't help us find this site. We found this site. I had to remortgage, remortgage my house to, you know, put the money down for the land to buy this thing. They didn't help us at that stage. Um, so it's, um, you know, e even even having to build this, you know, we were given a year. This this entire building was designed in one month and built in ten months. I mean, if that was, a, you know, an Olympic project, if ever there was one, it was it was an ex extraordinary feat. But this building is now, as I understand it, closer to the Olympic Stadium than any building has been to any Olympic Stadium ever in living memory. It's quite a unique and very privileged position to be in.